How's it going guys? Got a few things going on around here and uh, went to the auto auction and got some more cobalts. And uh, I'll get into that in a minute. I'll actually walk up to them here. But uh, got um, some more garage art. Got uh, a Craftsman banner off of eBay. And most of what I have is Craftsman tools. And you can see here. Most of them's Craftsman. Hand, you know, wrenches. And then I got all those C3 power tools. And it goes along with, uh, got some garage art up there. But um, I want to paint cars in here, and one of the things about painting cars is you need some kind of ventilation, you know, to probably get the overspray away. And I installed box fans in the ceiling. Let me see here. Just kind of shape out the size of the box and uh, shape of the box, and bring the screws in through the sides to to the joists. I need to hook up power to them yet. But uh, my goal is, that, my thought with it is, is that this room is pretty well sealed up other than maybe making a door for that room there. I got a door here. And then, uh, you know, air will get drawn up through the floor around the car and sucked out of those vents. And then it'll go to the roof vent or the soffit or whatever. But um, I've made this place for my own entertainment, so I don't really care about, you know, if it makes, you know, end up getting whatever colors coming out of the soffit. So, not really worried about that. Alright, the cars from the auto auction. These came from uh, Skipco Auto Auction in Canal Fulton. And uh, got this one right here for 1200 bid. Uh, 16 something by the time you pay the fees and the title and the tax and whatever or not. Um, the things that it needed was um, somebody ran the brake steel of steel all the way down to where there was no pad on there at all. It was just a piston coming out and running against the rotor. And same way with the one on the end. Same situation with that one. Um, that one was so far down into the rotor that it was actually going into the cooling fins in the center of the rotor. So I had to buy rot rotor and uh, pad uh, kits for them. And I rebuilt the brake caliper on one and replaced the brake caliper on another one. And uh, got that all dialed in. Uh, that's pretty much... That one there needed a new shifter knob. And I just went to pull apart and got a whole shifter shifting uh, console because the little slider plastic slider thing that goes in the you know in the shifter it was broke out of it so I just grabbed the whole shifter and uh, got some other little nib bits from pull apart to go on it um, this one here also came from the auction but that was like a year ago same with that one uh, this one here I got I won the bid for four hundred dollars and uh, but it, it was titled as, or advertised as no reverse and no brakes. Of course, we already told you about the brakes. Um, when I got it out of the the day I bought it, um, oh, and the bank did not accept four hundred dollars. I they drew me to six hundred dollars, so it was like eight seventy out the door. Um, the when I took it out of the auction, I took it out to the front where the parking lot is, so that way I can come back and get it later. And, uh, you know, put it in park and walked away from it. And we went up to go get it later. We put it on the trailer and discovered that it didn't have park either. So luckily it sat in the pot, in the spot that we had it parked and didn't roll away. Um, which it was a little bit of a grade. And there was probably this uh, $50,000 camper in front of it. So it was really fortunate that it didn't roll away but um, when we got it home we discovered that the uh, shifting cable it's a push-pull cable and right where it goes right where it goes to the transmission there's a little plastic piece that keeps the cable straight it was broke and the cable was just kinking just bending in the middle making it so that reverse and park was inaccessible so ten dollars a pull apart for that I uh, got uh, some other plastic pieces for the inside and 
uh, brake rotor and all that stuff for it. Um, I already have this one here uh, sold, or at least the person says they want it and they're going to buy it. Um, these two here, I don't know if I'm going to sell them or not. I'm kind of leaning towards keeping them for now or drive that one there and fix this one up. And then once I get this one fixed up, then I'll sell that one. Kind of a thing like that. Um, yeah. Uh, and the generator died on me. Um, I'll go back with the story with that. Alright, the generator. I made a post on Harvey, one of Harvey Spooner's videos. Uh, I think he was talking about his laptop. And uh, some viruses and stuff. But uh, it was just asking him a question about whether or not one of the Predator engines... Sorry about the wind... Um, would build a bolt to one of these generator heads because basically it's the same engine it's the same engine but uh, you know where it hooks up right here I'm thinking it looks different and then also the shaft from what other, another guy I think it was Roger said that the shaft's going to be different but anyways one day I went to fire this thing up and it was sitting back here just barely running and like revving up and down and I know that the gas tank has been pretty nasty. It's, it's brown inside. I mean, you're talking about putting new gas in it, it's just brown. Uh, the rust inside the tank. So I figure, well, the carburetor screwed up. So I get the carburetor off, clean it all out, put it back on. And it's doing the same exact thing. It's like it had no effect on it at all. And I got to looking at it and discovered that this little spring right here, which I didn't even have to unhook, you know, take the carburetor off. Is missing one of its legs and um, dug around in my garage found another one of these springs but it wasn't exactly the same as the spring that was on it um, mind you the first day that I messed around with it it was getting dark you know I just did the carburetor thing put it back together and it wouldn't run and I went home and made a post on Harvey's video came back out and discovered that this leg rusted off so I put the, another spring on here, but it wasn't the same. I ended up having to like trim and bend and trim and bend with it. But I ended up getting it back to where it's running right. And uh, also, the adjusted the valves. It was getting to the point to where it didn't really seem to have any compression. And um, which I made a video in the last winter uh, doing like a cold start on it. And it, I made a comment that it didn't seem like it was really fighting me to, you know, it didn't have any it didn't have any compression and basically the valves needed adjusting but uh, I've been pretty bad about neglecting this thing um, which I'm surprised that the carburetor hasn't screwed up because sometimes it sits back here for three months you know and then I fire it up and it's you know still runs and I've been bad about like I've never changed the oil in it um, you know it's just I don't know, I just don't do it. It's a cheap item, it's kind of like a push mower. It's like by the time, even if you neglect a push mower, by the time uh, it would have some kind of effects on the engine because you never changed the oil but just, you know, added it, of course, to it. The deck's rotted out and everything else. I kind of look at it like this is like a cheap Chinese thing that's probably going to have bad brushes and everything by the time something else fails on it. But, uh... I, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of hours out of this thing. It's amazing, really. But now I'm just going to use this as a gas tank. And it'll, it only holds about a quart. Uh, there's a gas tank inside of this. It only holds like a quart. But uh, it's less gas to maintain. Like if I put a gallon in the other tank and I don't use it, you know, then you got a whole gallon of gas going bad. Where this here, I just have a quart. It probably runs an hour and a half on a cord. But uh, another thing I got going is uh, I got the water tower built. Um, I need to put spouting up to use it, you know, to get water going into it. But I kind of need this to like wash uh, four wheelers and you know wash a car. Like if I'm gonna paint a car, it'd be nice to be able to like power wash. You know all the crevices and seams out of it you know before i take it in and work on it and like wet the floor of the garage put water on the floor of the garage so i don't have dust everywhere um these posts are not cemented in the ground they don't go in the ground at all they just sit here 
and then I put all these X things on here to stabilize it. But I didn't really want to make a permanent cemented in pole thing, so yeah. So with all this going on, uh, you know, work with the garage and uh, you know, work with certain things going around here. Um, it's going to lead up to some good videos of projects. Um, it's just I need to get to where it's you know I, the things I need to do to be able to do the things I want to do and uh, I just figured I'd keep you guys posted a little bit on you know I didn't just disappear you know and it's not make a video for four or five months because I got all these chores to do but uh, you know I just figured I, some people might find some entertaining entertainment with it but um, that's about all I got for today catch you guys later